What's up my LS Crazy Amigos? This is your boy Terry speaking from the garage shop once again. Here to offer you some more big bang for your buck product and info. What's up? Listen, I get a lot of email. I got a lot of email for, from clips that I, a clip that I did a, a while back about deleting the VVT in my Chevelle over here. And uh, I want to answer a few questions that people had. And uh, one of the most common questions was, what is VVT? Okay. VVT is variable valve timing. Okay, so basically what happens is the cam will advance and retard itself. So now, all you know, if you're one of those old school uh, distributor guys, you know that if you advance the timing, you get more torque. If you retard it, meaning bringing it back, you get more upper, you know, horsepower. So this is what the the VVT cam sprocket looks like. It looks just like this. This is it right here. Okay. Now what happens is, let me just explain to you what's going on here. Uh, a lot of people who have VVT, they don't, they're not sure. But I'm going to explain to you what's happening. This is not the timing mark. You got this little, I don't know what it is, little straight line going down. That's not the timing mark to line your VVT up with your cam sprocket. No, I'm sorry, your crank sprocket. This, see that, that arrow with this tooth right here? This is where you line up the dimple on the crank, on the crank sprocket, all right? Not that hole right here. A lot of people think it's that hole. No, no, no. And not... This line right here, no, because look, it goes in the middle of the tooth, so no, it's, where is it? It's that arrow right there is where it's a 6 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 12 o'clock on the crank sprocket. That's how you do it. You line this up, but if you look at this thing, this thing is kind of kind of beefy. Now, this has been phased out, meaning that it has a rev limiter, not rev limiter, um, a phase limiter in it by comp. As you can see, yeah, hold on a sec. There it is right there. And what it does, it limits the travel of the cam because what's happening is the cam is computer controlled. So when you get a when you get a tune, you, you need to put you need to give the guy the VVT tables or you can call them up and they'll give you the VVT tables. And what happens is this thing it advances itself and it retards itself. So it's kind of a cool little thing, but the, the only downfall, the reason I took it out was these things start making power like around 2,000, 2,500 RPM in my theory. And I guess you can get a smaller cam to, um, to, to, to compensate for it. But the thing is, is that they put these in automatics. GM put these in automatics. But now with the introduction of the LT or reintroduction of the LT uh, engines, manual transmissions are now having these. So I took mine out because, again, it wasn't making that much power off idle and... It was it was a, it was pretty much a dog up until about 3,000 RPM. So now, if you got this thing, and depending on what kind of cam specs you have, if you match it up with the with the torque converter, the stall speed, you'll you'll have a pretty healthy car. And these things work pretty. You know, a lot of people are scared of them because they don't know what's up with them, but they work pretty well. But just not for my for my uh, application in an auto in a manual, it didn't work that great. And I knew that there was a chance that I would have to take the cam out, which I did. So it was just a, a test for testing purposes. And I was like, well, I got nothing to lose. So if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But that's why I took this particular thing out of my, uh, my Chevelle. Now, if you've noticed, if you got a, a 6.0 cam sprocket, you see these little designs right here? This is what the cam sensor reads. And the sprocket the regular cam sprocket, the regular cam sprocket on the LS engine is nowhere near as thick as this. It's a, it's a fraction of what this is. And if you notice, they'll have the same cutout. They'll have the same exact cutout, but it'll be, it'll be kind of like beveled out. So that's what that is. And that's why it reads the cam sprocket. That's why you can't, that's why you got to change your cam, your, uh, your timing cover. So that's pretty much I have to say about the VVT. I hope this answers all the questions that you have. But if you have any more, you know how to reach me. Oh, and by the way, this. See this? This is different than the cam sprocket that I had. Okay, now this is the VVT, I'm um, sorry, cam bolt. This is the VVT cam bolt. Look how thick this thing is, all right? It goes in just like this. See? Okay, now here is the VVT cam bolt. It's a one bolt, and this is torque to yield. And when I say this thing is torque to yield, what I mean is when you torque this thing down, you, ha you have to put a degree of twist on it, and what happens is the bolt actually stretches. The bolt stretches. That's why you only could use this once. This, the head bolts, and the crank bolts, a couple of bolts on the engine, the LS engine, are torque, are torque, torque to yield, meaning 
that you can only use it once. Once you torque them down, they stretch and you can't use them again. So this is a one shot deal and it's a funky looking bolt, but this is what a VVT cam bolt looks like. But that's pretty much it. So listen, thank you. This was a little quick, you know, a little quick thing for VVT and and I hope this helps you out when you're doing your build. And again, just because it didn't work out for me with my manual six-speed, it doesn't mean it's not going to work out for you. So push the envelope and try. <laughs> so until the next time we meet, this is Terry. Please, as always, be easy. And I will catch you guys a little later on. Take care.